Hello, everyone, and we are looking at, well, a very quick me at the moment. I obviously didn't allow myself any uh, any downtime, but this is the MDF um, product called The Carriage from BP Laser Scenery. And as you can see, I'm trying to get all the pieces out of the frame which is going reasonably well. As you can see, I've got to apply a little bit of uh, double-fisted madness. The uh, I must get myself a proper um, hobby knife. I'm using something that's got a bit of a scalpel, but it's just I've just found it difficult to try and obtain a lot of uh, hobby material that I'm looking for. I'm sadly a very strange individual who likes to buy his stuff from his local shop. I'm not very big on internet purchasing. So uh, here I am. I'm, uh, these are the wheels. Now there is actually two wheels left over with this because if you count the wheels up you'll notice that oh there's an extra wheel left over. And I asked Paul, the designer, I said, why is there extra wheels? And he said, I told you. He said, they're for scenery. And I went, oh, that's right. You may have actually said that to me. But uh, as you can see, the uh, all the pieces pop out with a fair amount of ease. Uh, but yeah, the wheels were were nice. The uh, very minimal, uh, I guess, uh, shaving. Uh, what I tend to do is, is that uh, once a model is finished and dried, I will get myself some sandpaper or a file. I'm, I'm beginning to think sandpaper might be better than a file. I'm not too sure yet. I've yet to uh, to make my mind up. I'm having far too much fun putting together, I guess, the prototypes that Paul is giving me. So the, uh, the little pieces there, they're the hubs that go on the wheels. So uh, proving tricky as I try to pop them out. Yes, finally get them. I learnt another trick later on with one of the other, I think the wagon. But hopefully I've not lost or cut too much with putting uh, my camera in the wrong place uh, with putting this together. But anyway, I've uh, progressing along as you can see, it all comes out nicely. The uh, not a lot of trimming to do because uh, most of it tends to be on the outer side of the uh, of the model so which makes it easier anyway so they're the uh, I guess the carriage uh, walls for the uh, for the side so obviously where people come in and out so I was quite, the detail on there is quite good. I'm beginning to wonder what I will do with painting this. So I'm thinking perhaps a black, a black undercoat, obviously to hide, hide the, um, the interior because there's no seats or anything made for this for internal because uh, uh, there's not a lot of models that are made seating or to sit so uh, in this case here looking at this carriage for me it would just be a piece of terrain now these pieces I'm pulling off are uh, the is the baggage section I think at the back of the uh, at the back of the carriage
Yeah, so we continue to potter along. Oh, I'm having a lot of fun here with the uh, trying to do the audio for this and my wife's in the other part of the house watching Flip Married at First Sight, which personally I can't I can't tolerate, but she likes watching it. Actually, I think a friend of mine was telling me that his 80-odd-year-old father enjoys watching Married at First Sight, so... Yeah, I think I'll shoot myself if I have to uh, to watch that when I'm 80. I must be really far gone if that's what I find as entertainment. But uh, yeah, so here we go. We're finally getting the last of the last of the pieces. So now just doing some some trim. Desperately trying not to go to sleep here. I don't know why all of a sudden I've decided that I'm going to start yawning. So if there's any long gaps or whatever, maybe I've fallen asleep behind the camera because I'm sitting here looking at it all and I'm there going, I could have thought I sped this up and I've actually sped the camera up by, I think it's a thousand percent. So I must have gone fairly slow. Obviously, the fast part was really obvious at the beginning of the uh, the video, but now I've almost like I've slowed down. Might have to go back and have a look at the uh, the video settings. Maybe for some reason it's got to slow off. Maybe you go really fast at the beginning and then slow down towards the end. But oh, who knows? But uh, cleaning this all up as I said does does not take a lot I should always of course say safety first when you're doing this because uh, obviously uh, I guess what I'm doing may not be a safe practice for some but I've been doing this for so long and the fact that the blade is in itself fairly blunt uh, it's not going to do I hope it won't do significant damage to me if I suddenly slip, but, you know, I haven't had a knife slip for years. Actually, a poor friend of mine, he um, he did do himself a fair injury, ended up in hospital. I think he he um, did his tendons in on one of his, or well, didn't do his tendons in, but came very close to severing them, I think. Uh, it has been quite some time, but uh, I've got a very amusing photo of him in, in hospital giving us the finger seeing it was the finger that had been sliced so uh, but he's all recovered now he's a good friend he and I we play uh, two player uh, board games a lot so we've just picked up und or sorry he's just picked up undaunted reinforcements and I'm really really impressed with the box so much so that I uh, contacted a friend of mine who has a business and said to him, look, you must get this in for me. So here I am, I've uh, put it all there. And now, obviously, my little brain is thinking, how am I going to put this together? It's cheating if you've got to go to a how to put it together. But as you can see, I've obviously failed again trying to put square pegs in triangular holes. So I'm looking rather confused and thinking how does this go together and honestly I did I honestly thought usually I can nut out how um, a model will go together without the instructions you know there's a fair bit of uh, uh, intellect or a fair bit of logic I guess with with doing that so uh, yeah so there I am pondering Considering how slow this is going, I'm thinking, hmm, I may have to think about going to find some instructions. But am I going to? No. Look at me. I'm there going, I refuse to give in. I'm not going to go look at some instructions. I'm just going to continue to look at all the pieces here, thinking, now, how is this going to go together? That's clearly the bottom plate. Those are clearly the side pieces. So... Haha, <laughs> yep, you guessed it, that very quick thing. I went and found Paul's Facebook site, which has all the instructions. And as you can see very quickly, here I am <laughs> putting together that's the back end of the uh the back end of the carriage, and that's 
Um, you know, you could run it either as perhaps footmen that would ride in the back, or you could use it to store luggage or uh, or whatever. So, waiting obviously for the uh, for the uh, glue to dry, and now I'm looking at now how does this now go together? I'm th Again, Paul actually states on his Facebook page, which has all the instructions, he says, look, do dry fit everything before you start gluing. Because some people will use uh, super glue. And uh, once you use super glue, you're done with, uh, with MDF. Because once you start to uh, pull it back off, it rips whole chunks out. So I certainly do not recommend super glue for your MDF buildings unless you really know what you're doing and you feel confident with doing it. So I'm following Paul's instructions here where he says, you know, do one side of the coach first before you put in the roof. And I'm there going, okay, that looks like it's going to fit. Am I going to be able to get it to go any further? Yeah, I'm having a look at the instructions again, I would think. I'll... Um, have to see if I can find the uh, the actual bits and pieces of the pictures and actually slot them into the video and see how that goes. I've only just thought of this, thinking maybe that might make things easier for people. All right, so we've now got the roof on and trying to get everything. No, not got. No. What am I doing? Oh, I'm doing the gluing now. <laughs> Dear. All right, so we're trying to get this in again. And, of course, we have... I think a little bit of trouble with the excess glue, but again, I tend to use a leftover um, piece of MDF, thin MDF, to just wipe the edges. So here I am here now going, yep, I think I can do this. This looks easy. I did the first one. And we'll see just how, let's just see how good John is with trying to put this together. Will this do? All right, so we're progressing. I've got the uh, those pieces on. As you can see, that's the uh, that's what I do. I use a a piece just to wipe out all the excess glue. Makes it a little less for um, uh, for uh, what is it for congealing in lumps or anything. So I'm now looking at the back end. So I've gone and had a look at the instructions. Again, yes, John had to look at instructions. I'm thinking, okay, so how's this going to work? No, this doesn't look like... What am I doing? I'm thinking, am I getting this right? Yeah, I must be getting it right. There we go. bit more glue. Let's just use the old finger. Get that to fit in there. All right, there we go. The back section's on. So, hurrah! We're moving along nicely. So, we've got a starting to get a bit of rigidity and uh, I guess solid working surface to continue to work with so now I'm looking at that section there and that took a little bit of working out I'm there going how's that go in because once again got to look at the instructions because it's saying that uh, that little divot at the front gets pushed in now here I am trying to uh, Work out how am I going to do? Okay, let's put a bit of glue in there. That might help us. Then I've got to nicely slide it in without having the whole thing drop. Yes, there we go. All right, and I'm trying to keep it relatively flush and square. And that looks like I might have that done. Looks good. Now, obviously, I've gone off, had a quick look at the uh, the instructions again, and I'm fiddling with. With this going now, have I done the right thing? Is it going to work? Yeah, that's that's looking good. Okay, so the uh, next thing to do is the driver's seat. So these are all the pieces for the driver's seat. I'm giving them a bit of a a, uh, a scratch. Get rid of the excess uh, MDF that clearly didn't come off when I was first doing it. So... Yeah, how are we going there? Yep, slowly getting there, John, aren't we? No, look, doing a good job, haven't cut myself. It's going well. So, uh, how 
course, John's trying to work out. He's now, I'm now totally confused as to which is up and which is down, which is why you're seeing me moving everything about. And I'm there going, okay, what am I, how's this go together? And that goes there, yes. Then that'll go there, yes. Okay, John, we're progressing a bit further. Then that goes there, yep. Now, how's that? Okay, so that's the seat from the front. Now, I've got to glue, and you watch it. I'll get confused with what I'm doing here for sure, with trying to get this together. So I put bits on the end, thinking, yep, this will work out well. So we'll do the exact opposite to what I was doing. Yep, we'll go this way instead. And there you go. Okay, so I've got that. Yeah, yep, yeah, come on, stick, 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 damn you. Right, okay, that looks good. That will give us plenty of stability. Now i just got to, yeah, am I getting confused again? No. Okay, once again, the Aquadir. Aquadir, oh, I've always called it Aquadir because that's what the brand name is here, but obviously any craft glue is uh, just as good for doing this work. It absorbs nicely into the MDF and does give a good bond. So, uh, yep, we're progressing. We're progressing, and now I've gone. Now, have I got the right? Yep, got the right parts. And then I'm thinking, do I need to? Yep, all right. Lots of got a little too exuberant, I think, with the glue there. Yep, so let's spread it out a bit. And here we go, the last section. So that's looking good. So I'm happy with that. So that's the part that goes at the front where the uh, driver will, or drivers, will sit. Get rid of all that excess. Get rid of that excess. And of course, yep, you guessed it, dropped off. Hopefully it'll eventually stay there with a little more. Yeah. So I've now gone off to have a look at the instructions again. I'm going, right now, what am I doing? Okay. That will sit on the front. And there we go. It's starting to look like a coach now, isn't it? Now, I did find out that that front section there is actually quite heavy. And uh, the weight will actually pull it off the front of the coach. So you do need to keep an eye on that when you're working with obviously with the wood glue or craft glue because it will come away and you'll end up with a gap now i don't think i had that happen in this case but uh, just a, a warning to the yep yeah, as you can see it just fell off and i'm there going, okay how do we fix that apply more glue yes glue always fix it Glue always fixes it. Actually, I was reading a book just the other day. Uh, I quite like Orlando Sanchez and his Montague and Strong. And I was listening to the first book again. And uh, I love how one of the things is, uh, you know, shoot the werewolf. And it's, you know, well, shoot him. And he goes, I am shooting him. And the reply is, well, shoot him harder. And uh, yes, now I do highly recommend the... Uh, Orlando Sanchez's um, novels, his Montague and Strong are really good. He's got a few other spin-offs. There's a, another one called Bangers and Mash, which I thought was... Uh, <laughs> I just loved the, uh, the name. But here we go. We're still having a bit of trouble with that front section wanting to come off. And now I'm looking at the undercarriage because I did look at the instructions and... As you can see, I'm having a good think about this. I'm thinking, how am I going to get this to work? Which part goes at the front and which one goes at the back? Because the wheels were what confused me. The The large wheels, pardon me, the large wheels go at the back of the coach and the small wheels are at the front. So you can see my hands off there looking at the... Uh, looking at my tablet going hmm but anyway i'm now thinking no oh, 
Honestly, I sometimes wonder, do I even really look at the instructions properly? Because I'm thinking, why did I just do that? Okay, so this is the section that goes there. Yes, good. Okay, I've worked that part out. Excellent. So dry fit's good. Let's go whack some glue on. Lots of glue. Glue solves all problems in the end until you find out you've done it wrong and then you really get grumpy. Thankfully, I've not had too many of those those situations. What about anybody else who's watching this? Have you had that situation where you've started putting something together and then realised that you've actually put it on back to front? Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure I've done it. I just can't remember what it was that I what I was uh, making that uh, that particular situation did occur because ah, oh, it uh, it annoyed me no end. But here we go. So we've got the uh, first set of the, I call it the undercarriage. A uh, bit of an aircraft man. So uh, for me, the old undercarriage is looking good. So this is the, um, this is the small struts which go at, I think the, I think they go at the back. We'll, we'll soon see where I slot it anyway. So. doing well now I do have some troubles here because while it dry well I didn't dry fit it but I'm there going look this shouldn't be an issue but then when I started to apply a little bit of pressure the whole model started to um, move, lose a bit of its rigidity so you'll see that I've gripped it and uh, now the other sections are coming off so and I'm there going okay so it's it's gone down there that's good now why won't it sit? So my frustration's working a bit and then I'm thinking, okay, have I got this thing? Oh, now the damn thing's moved again and everything comes up. So, but then it's far better that it does that than lock into place and then you have all sorts of problems trying to get everything to, uh, to work. So at this stage, I'm trying to get those cross pieces to sit flush. And uh, I think I may have it. Yes, looks like I've got it. Okay, so I'm sort of happy. Sort of happy. Am I ever happy? No, never. I'm never happy with anything. I'm a sour old puss. So, all right, so I've looked at that. Okay, pulled it off. I've got to press it and then we'll put it back into slot. Yeah, that works well. There we go. Mission achieved. And uh, so I've done that. Now out comes all the excess glue. Just to make life a little easier. Now I've got to put that front one on. Now that front one did give me a bit of curry. Because I'm thinking, yep. And as usual, because it's a, I guess, a cross piece that meshes... Uh, you start to move down one too fast, you can't, yeah, you can see, there I am trying to, yep, that'll fit there, yeah, looking good. And then I go, let's spin it around, maybe it'll do differently. Yep, they're symmetrical pieces, so <laughs> trust me, moving things around is not what wins the day. But anyway, here we go, we've got that. Now I've got to go apply a bit of glue. The glue's going in, yep. We're getting there. That seems to be working okay. Now here's where I... Yeah, well, good on you, John. We spin it around yet again. And now we're trying to get it to fit onto that cross section. And I'm finding that it's not wanting to level. Okay, so I've got that there. I think I'm almost there. But... I don't think I'm happy with that. Yeah, that trying to get it flush is just proving to be a problem. Now I hope, and as you can see, that's come off the uh, the base again, and I'm still not able to get everything to to mesh in. And I'm there going, what am I doing? So there you go, people. Learn from the uh, from the monkey that uh, can't put it together properly. But looks like I might 
but then I'm looking at that and I'm thinking that still doesn't look yep here we go so decided to pull it off and yeah here we go there we go an Edison light bulb moment so you can learn from my wonderful mistakes <laughs> So look, okay, so I've got the uh, chassis, the undercarriage, onto this carriage. Now, I'm having a think, obviously, I've gone and had a look at the wheels to see, again, where do the wheels go? Now, I think John the Unwise, as I may have said earlier, put the wrong wheel in the wrong place. So... You may be amused and call me a bit of a dill because uh, I go to all this effort and even though I looked at the instructions, I uh, did not get... Now, that's not where you put the big wheels, people. John is doing it wrong and he doesn't pick up his mistake until he's finished. And unfortunately, I sort of can't... I haven't worked out how to speed up things even faster at this stage because really I think I need to because um, yeah what can I say hey listen I'm just an amateur and I enjoy what I do which is sharing with you good people um, my hobby and uh, I've been very lucky to be able to obviously get these uh, prototype sheets that Paul has has put together and I'm thinking, oh, look at this. Isn't this wonderful? I'm doing a good job. I'm getting the wheels on. So we'll give the, the small wheels a go. Yep, that looking. But as you will find, once I get to that point of time, I've gone and done it wrong. <laughs> oh, and I must admit, trying to get those wheels looking straight so that they're not wobbling off Otherwise, obviously, it'd be a very, very uncomfortable carriage ride, wouldn't it? So, just cut a bit more of the uh, that off. And we are looking at trying to get that other wheel on and holding down that, uh, down that section. It's, uh, it seems to be... Okay, so we're progressing progressing very well and uh, that's hopefully that background noise doesn't come through I hope but anyway if it doesn't I'll have to go and have words with my wife about recording silence while I'm doing things but anyway so I'm looking at that and I'm thinking okay what's next what's next ah that's right these are got to go on However, they're a little bit knobbly at the end, but I'm thinking, oh, do I really worry about the knobbly bit? So, as I said, I have put these wheels on the wrong section of the coach. And you'll find out, I guess, in due course, the way this is going, probably another couple of minutes, you'll find, oh, he's done it wrong. Nothing unusual with John. John always does everything wrong. It's a bit like, you know, applying a hammer to fix a plumbing job. Oh, sorry, that's a bit of an insider joke. So you're now starting to look at it and you're thinking, yeah, that doesn't look right, John. That big wheel at the front. Although at the time I'm there thinking, yeah, that looks okay. Yeah, you wait until you try and sit it. And I think a light bulb might start to be appearing. I'm not too sure. I'm looking at this and I'm there going... Okay, what have I done? I've... And of course, oh, that's the other thing too. Trying to get those um, hubs on the wheels is a bit of a... a bit of a guess if you're trying to specifically get the... Uh, uh, it centred, because there's no... Uh, there's no plugs or anything with trying to get them to mesh up. I find out later what the best thing to do is to uh, apply the nubs after, oh sorry, before 
before you actually attach the wheel because then you can take the wheel off or sorry you've, you've got the wheel separate and you can spend a bit of time trying to line up the hub so that it doesn't look like it's off center of the wheel when it's finished so here I am and I'm now gone okay that doesn't look right So I'm thinking, what a deal. I'm doing this for people to have a look at, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I have actually applied. Yeah, when you look at it, I'm there going, that doesn't look right at all. That looks like I've stuffed up. I think I've gone and had a look at the uh, at the instructions, and I've gone, yep, I've put the... However, clearly... John still hasn't had his light bulb moment. He's continuing to pursue this. So uh, I can just see poor Paul's, because he watched the first video I put together and I, he was, uh, I think, a little critical because he said, I don't think I'll be using your videos to, uh, <coughs> to, uh, to link onto my site of how to put things together because, well... I'm not perfect. This for me is just, I'm having fun doing something. It's something different from my channel. And as you can see, I'm now looking at this going, that does not look right. Because I didn't follow the instructions properly. So here we go. We're going to go, yep, off come the wheels. Yep. We're going to apply them into the right place now, aren't we? And of course, the as soon as you start fiddling around because the glue hasn't properly set in, and of course, trying to get those things to line up was uh, yeah a bit of a... So there you go, good people. Learn from my errors. So you'll find... Oh, there it is, comes off again. So I'm beginning to think, oh, do I just take it off and fiddle with the wheels and then reassemble the carriage? No, obviously I haven't. I'm still trying to get the thing in. Okay, applied a bit more pressure. Pressure! Uh, come on, are we going to get that in? Yes, getting there. Are we getting there? And as you can see, it doesn't look quite centered, even from from this position. I can see that it's a little bit off. I think it's just the cut in some cases. And there we go. So I'm now going to obviously spend a bit of time trying to get the wheels to sit so that they're flush and uh, that they don't go off at an angle. You can see I've lost one of the nubs has slightly come out. I'm trying to fix that up. Yeah, oh, there we go. It's gone off again. But uh, trying to get everything to line up nicely because, as I said, the last thing you want is your wheels to look like they're off at 200 degree. You know, off on a off on such a tangent. Now that actually looks like the models are supposed to be. And the last thing now is the, and I'm there going, no, I'm not going to put the wheels down. I can see that ending in uh, in grief, but they give he does give you, okay, I am going to try it. Well done, John. So you actually get a, I guess, a movement base, if you'd like to call it that. But personally, I'll probably run it without, uh, without a base at this stage because uh, I tend to have all sorts of problems with consistency of bases between projects. So we seem to be getting this okay. Yep, now I've got to try and slot this in. Dry run? Are we going to do a dry run, John? Yes, there we go. So honestly, to start with, the dry fit was good. It was only the minute that I add, added glue, we got a bit of um, a bit of lubrication in there, and uh, with the lubrication, things got a little bit slippery. And of course, now I'm trying to uh, 
work out how I'm going to get this model to sit so that it will dry in place because as you can see as soon as I put it down that's that top heavy it uh, fell off so I'll probably leave that there to dry and uh, yeah John that's not going to work it fell off the first time do you think you're going to get it to stay again and of course I'm still having a look at those those wheels but I've pulled that off a bit for people to have a look at it and uh, yeah so there we go that is it glued I'm uh, trying to uh, to do there so that is the job whether or not it's a Bob the Builder proper job done I don't know but there we go this is it it's all glued it's all stuck and that looks quite impressive as you can see there is no internal uh, uh, furniture or anything so you would need to obviously spray that black probably in a dark coach altogether well that ends this video thank you very much for everybody who has i guess waited all the way through so till next time signing off the honorable john